in this exercise. We'll have you create and consume advanced services. So for example, an HTTP service. Then we'll have you manipulate the ASP.NET pipeline and extend that to authorization and authentication working with the pipeline filters. Next, we'll have you create an OData queryable action. And finally, we'll have you consume an OData service and attempt to use Visual Studio to do that consumption. So go ahead and pause this video. And after you pause it, work through these five steps, then resume the video and we'll cover the key aspects that you should have covered as well. So the first thing we asked you to do was create and consume an advanced HTTP service. So at some level, you would have gone and created an HTTP client object. You would have used a base address and manipulated headers to consume that HTTP service. And your creation piece at the end could have been just a simple hello world uh, JSON return weren't really specific with that, just as long as you understood that this is the approach to actually consume a service. Next, we asked you to look at manipulating the ASP.NET pipeline. So there's really two things we were looking for there. So we were looking to make sure that you could properly register your message handlers within the Web API config file, and then understand that you really were looking to use an implementation of delegating handler, which is what you would have had to implement in any custom class. And then you would have say, overridden your async, your send async, something along these lines with your own custom logic. If you were anywhere in that area doing this type of thing, then you were likely on the right track. It was more the approach we were looking for than anything else specific. Now, further on the pipeline, we then asked you to look at authorization and authentication. So again, for those back in your web API, you would have had to add classes that were going to work with those filters. So you would have specified something like config.filters.add new, and it would have been one for authorization and the same thing, one for authentication. So looking at these, We'll do the authorization first. You would have had to implement the authorization, sorry, the authorized attribute and override the on authorization. And then you could have put whatever logic you would like in there. On the authentication piece, you would have had to implement the attribute and the I authentication filter and then placed in custom code within the authenticate async and you would have also had to set this up allow multiple uh, always best to let visual studio implement the interface and then you can just kind of fill in the blanks so if you were doing this type of thing then you were definitely on the right track next we asked you to look at creating an odata queryable action so what we we're looking for here was were you correctly implementing some type of controller that uses the OData controller as its base so that you could work with the verbs and specify a I HTTP action result return type and using, of course, the system.web.oData. The specifics in terms of uh, what you were actually creating were not important, just this overall approach. And really, if you knew to use the OData controller as the base controller, uh, you were definitely on the right track. And then finally, we asked you to look at consuming an OData service via Visual Studio, a little less code. So for that, we were just looking to see if you knew enough to go grab a NuGet uh, package around OData, maybe Microsoft OData.client that is geared towards consuming OData JSON payloads, or perhaps you would have gone on and grabbed a Visual Studio template that also lets you create a project for quickly deploying a scaffold that will let you consume OData services.